this uh, sacred marriage, these considerations. First of all, read the epistle for the marriage of Mr. and Mrs. James Cavender. And the reading of the epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5. Brethren, let wives be subject to their husband as to the Lord, because the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, being himself Savior of the body. So just as the church is subject to Christ, so also let wives be to their husbands in all things. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church, and delivered himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, cleansing her in the bath of water by means of the word, in order that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, and, having, and not having spot or wrinkle or, or any such thing, but that she might be holy and without blemish. Even thou sought husbands to love their wives as their own bodies, and he who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh. On the contrary, he nourishes and cherishes it, as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body, made from his flesh and his bones. For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, I mean in reference to Christ and to the church. However, that each one of you also love his wife, just as he loves himself, and let the wife respect her husband. And then we stand for the gospel. You might go to St. Matthew, chapter 19. At that time there came to Jesus some Pharisees testing him, and saying, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any cause? But he answered and said to them, Have you not read that the Creator, from the beginning, made them male and female, and said, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Therefore now they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Thus far the words of today's holy time. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. St. Augustine, some very wise words that summarize the whole history of the world. In the whole history of every man. And it is a story of love. True loves built two cities. The one, the city of the love of self, which leads even to the despising of God. And the other, the city of the love of self, leading even to the despising of, of, of leading the city of God, leading even to the despising of self. There's a city of the love of self, and there's a city of the love of God. We must understand that they are both cities. Man is told today that he is alone. But what did God say on the very first day he created man? He said these words, let us make man. It takes one God in one way, God in his unity, made angels. God in his unity made all things except one being. God one made cows. God one made angels. God one made all things in six beautiful days. And he saw that what he did was good. But then he said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, let us make man. And man is wisely called by Aristotle, and Plato, and St. Thomas, and the wise men of all the world. Man is a political being. Man is a social being. We are not made to be alone. We are not made to be independent. As Bishop Sheen used to say, 
we must be rid of the Declaration of Independence, and we must make a Declaration of Dependence. For we are dependent upon God. We are dependent upon all the words that proceed from His mouth. And on this day, Mr. James is dependent upon Rebecca. Miss Rebecca, Mrs. Rebecca, is dependent upon James. They are bound. Normally when you go to prison, you're supposed to have a weeping ceremony. But they are bound. They are tied together. This tying is called marriage. Marriage means tied. It means bound together. It means stuck. When you are married, you are finished. So why have a celebration? The reason to have a celebration is very simple. Man was not meant to be alone. God, when he first thought of man, he said, let us make man. And then he made Adam by himself for a few days in order that he might emphasize this point. He wanted Adam to see that you may be really smart, the healthiest man in the world. He would never die. He would never grow sick. He only ate health foods. He was perfect in every way. He was really stinking smart. He had infused knowledge. He knew everything. And he could rule. Go out and name all the animals. And so he did. He wanted man to see that of all the creatures, the most likely to God is man. He wanted to test him. You have made you perfect. I made you wonderful. I made you with everything that there is. Is it enough for you? I gave you the whole world. Is it enough? And Adam came back and said, Lord, I don't mean to complain, but... It's not enough. For there is no creature like unto myself with whom I might share my being. This is the true mystery of man. Man is a creature. We need by this the male of the species who can possess many things. He can be very rich, but he will never be satisfied by anything he has. He is made for something else. Therefore God put man to sleep. And he did not create Eve out of nothing. Every other creature he made from nothing by his own direct power. But Eve could not come from nothing. He pulled from the side of Adam. And he made Eve. So that Adam is never complete unless he pours himself out. And this is the mystery of man. Many men today are preparing for the bad days to come. You've got to store up ammunition. You've got to store up water. You've got to store up foods. I need a lot more than most of you. You've got to store up all kinds of stuff to be ready when the bad days come. Make sure you've got lots of ammunition. Be ready, and you'll be ready, and you'll be empty, and you will die alone. That's not what man was made for. That is not at all what makes him happy. It isn't what holds him together. These men that live this way do not know what manhood is. Man was made to pour himself out. So Adam was made by God, absolutely perfect and happy. And he came to God and said, but there's no creature like unto myself. I need something more. I need something better. I need something to pour myself out into. And then God created Eve. And he said before that, it is not good for man to be alone. And so Eve was created. And the holy institution of marriage and then God spoke to them. And he said, now you have marriage. 
Now you're bound. Now increase and multiply and people the earth. I want this world to be filled with humans. He didn't make one mommy ant, one daddy ant, and all ants are the descendants of Aunt Adam and Aunt Eve. He didn't do that. He made billions of ants. He made the thousands of animals of every type. But man can only come from one, and he must proceed to many. He must increase. This is what we have, that it is a resurrection of God, that the angels do not have. The angels are so far more wonderful than us, so more beautiful than us, so more powerful than us. But no angel is upset to serve man. The angels are very happy to be our guardians. The angels are very heaven, happy to bring messages to us. They are very happy to protect us in so many ways. Because we were the ones that God decided to become. We were the ones that he decided to take on to himself. And why? To build. To build. Now we've already built the city of the love of self. That's the 20th and 21st century. So I uh, take care of yourself. Don't ever let yourself down. Don't ever blame yourself. You've got to take care of yourself. You've got to love yourself. And everybody loves themselves. And that's why we got the highest suicide rate in the history of the entire world. Because they love themselves. Everybody's taking selfies. Fat, ugly, and stupid people are getting skin uh, lifts. It ain't helping. They're doing plastic surgery. Ladies that are 160 years old are wearing miniskirts. It doesn't work. They are trying to make everything focused upon themselves. And they're miserable. It doesn't work. We were made to pour ourselves out. We were made to run. We were made to spread what is inside of us. That's why it says to the priest of God in the sacred scripture, Blessed are the feet of the carriers of the gospel of peace. <coughs> oh, those priests in heaven, they shall have sacred feet. You'll be able to tell them by the special glory that is in their feet. And why blessed are their feet? Because the feet are carriers. <coughs> they are carriers. They're all worried about carrying the coronavirus. They're all worried about carrying something bad. We must be carriers of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must be carriers of the God, the Father, and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Carriers of his divine love. Carriers of truth. Carriers of his holy mother, the church, which we must take upon our backs. We have to be carriers upon our feet of these things which we carry to the ends of the earth. Why is there marriage? That there might be a man united to his wife, so that there might be children. All the children God sends. And these children are there to people the kingdom of heaven on earth, and then to people the kingdom of heaven in heaven. We are made to increase and multiply. We must take the truth that is inside of us and make it increase and multiply. Take the love that is meant to be inside of us and make it increase and multiply. Take the passions that God gave us and make them increase and multiply and take the flesh that God gave us and make it increase and multiply and carry God in flesh everywhere in the earth. God decided to become incarnate. It's the most wonderful thing that he did to become in flesh and he wants to be in flesh in 2021. He wants to be in flesh in our age. He wants to be carried to every end of the earth. And this is what marriage is all about. To make God in flesh. To make his kingdom increase. And it is increased by love. Now we teach in the understanding of marriage that because of original sin, there's a great problem that comes to marriage. And that is called selfishness. The man tends to be selfish. 
the woman tends to be selfish, and their selfishness is manifested a bit differently. This selfishness is cured by babies. Babies are the cure to selfishness. God intended for us to have babies. We are in an old and dying world. We are meant to be in a young and thriving world. And this happens by marriage. It was the children that saved the world. A couple of days ago, or yesterday, was the priest of St. Catherine of Siena. She was homeschooled. Never really learned how to read and write. So God taught her how. Lived in her room. She was the 23rd of 23 children. And then God appeared to her. She came out of her room. And she saved the Catholic Church. She blasted popes. She blasted bishops. Nobody got in her way. And she spoke with the power of God. She was number 23. Which child is the one that's going to make the difference? Which child is the one that's going to continue the line of promise? You know, according to the law of the Jews, the eldest son continues the line of promise. And that's the rule. The eldest son will be the one who will be the great-grandfather of the Messiah. Try reading the sacred scripture and the true history. Judah was not the eldest son. And yet, he carried the line of promise. David was not the eldest son. He was the youngest. And he is the father of the line of promise. Not only was he the youngest son, he was the forgotten son. Solomon was not the eldest son. So it is that God will choose whom he wills. And many of those that are meant to continue the line of promise, they were not born. Padre Pio speaks of this before he died in 1968. He heard the confession of an old woman shortly a year before he died. And she confessed her sins. At the end of the confession, Padre Pio said to her, I think you forgot something. What did I forget, Father? When you were very young, and when you were newly married, you had an abortion. Baby was going to be premature. She was embarrassed, so she had an abortion. Let me tell you about that son. First of all, he was going to be a boy. Secondly, he was going to grow to become priest. Thirdly, he was going to become a bishop. Fourthly, he was going to be made a cardinal. Fifthly, he was going to be elected pope. And lastly, he was going to reform the Holy Roman Catholic Church, and stayed it. He was never born. You forgot that. How many holy popes, how many holy leaders, how many holy kings, how many holy men, how many holy ladies are not in our world today because their mothers birth controlled them out of existence. Because their mothers and their fathers decided to abort them. We must build. Now what is the name of the city that loves itself? It is called the city of pandemonium. It is called the city of chaos. It is called the city of hell. The city of violence. The city of foolish ruling wicked rules. They start now with mass. You think it stops there? It will continue and never stop until we are completely enslaved. The devil no longer grows tired of making rules. He never grows tired of crushing his enemies and crushing his own friends as well. He never stops. He's building a city of pandemonium, making a one world government that shall be ruled by Satan. This kingdom is the kingdom of self, and it must be destroyed. And it shall be destroyed by the power of God. And how is it destroyed? By building the kingdom of love of God. The love of God is the glue that holds Rebecca and James together. 
There is no other clue that works. The love of God is the purpose of all things that they do. And as we ask that each marriage, may this house, as it says in the blessing from the Old Testament, be a place of refuge for those in need. And may the blessings of the compassionate come down upon the house. The blessings shall not come upon this house if it is not a house of compassion. Hard times are upon us in the near future. People are trying to survive and just get by. Lovers don't survive and get by. Lovers charge into the night. Lovers build when others are trying to hide. Lovers work when others stop. We need lovers. We're not afraid of losing a little thing like that in our own life. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, He who loves his own life shall lose it. But he who hates his life, for my sake, shall find it. He ran to the cross. The saints ran to martyrdom. We run to spread this holy faith. And let the enemies attack. They shall fail. Two loves built two cities. And the city that matters is the city of the love of God. And it is a city. It is not good for us to be alone. We are meant to be together. We are meant to be united in faith. We're meant to be united in the Holy Church. We're meant to be united in the love of God. We're meant to carry that upon our feet to the very ends of the earth. That's why we're here. We're not here to be healthy. One day you'll die. Maybe you'll die healthy, but you will die. We are not here to be healthy. We're here to know, love, and serve God in this world so that we might be eternally happy in the next. That's why we are here. Don't forget our purpose. And let this marriage be a sacred marriage. We must be united in Christ, united for children, united in true love, and they will be able to make it through any of the difficulties that come. And let their house be always open for anyone that is in need. And let them spread the holy faith to the ends of the earth. That's what we have to do. Let's be builders of the city of the love of God. I want to close the end with you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then during the canon of the Mass, there will be the nuptial blessing, the holy and sacred blessing taken from the Old Testament, which is the blessing of Rebecca. And on this day, James receives no blessings. Because from now on, his only blessing is her. That's the only blessing he has. He needs no other. He needs no other. And this is a special sacred marriage for me. The boy said to this girl is my special daughter. And I've always been mad at every single guy that tried to marry her. <laughs> but James passed the test after being screamed at. <laughs> But nonetheless, what this marriage must be is a very sacred marriage in Christ. It's most wonderful. And there is no blessing that can ever come to James without this girl. Christ laid down his life for his church. And to be a good husband is very simple. You just have to die. It's not hard. You have to pour yourself out. God made the man to pour himself out. Let him pour himself out. And there is a sacred blessing after the canon of the Mass, more ancient than the marriage ceremony itself. And that is that Rebecca be blessed with the wisdom of three wonderful women. We'll read about them. You'll hear them in the canon of the Mass. We'll stop the Mass in the canon. Forbid to do that. Turn with the chasuble while the Blessed Sacrament is upon the altar. And make the sacred blessing of the three holy women, which must be inside of her back. So we'll say these words. May she be the beloved of her husband, as was Rebecca. I mean, as was, uh, what was the third one? That, uh, Sarah Isaac and Sarah Rebecca. Jacob and uh, the, uh, the uh, Now we're going to lose our Bible history. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe the beloved as her husband, Jacob and Rachel. Maybe beloved of her husband as was Rachel, the youngest of the three. Jacob spent 14 years to marry her and thought nothing of it. She was worth every bit of it. May she be wise as Rebecca. And Rebecca needs wisdom. The wisdom of Rebecca made something happen. The wisdom of Rebecca 
made Jacob receive a blessing. He was too scared to receive because he was a coward. Made Isaac bless Jacob when Isaac didn't want to do it because he was blind. Made Esau kiss his brother and forgive him when Esau wanted to murder his brother. How did it happen? Rebecca was just listening. And she cooked a really good dinner for Isaac. And somehow, everything got better. The mystery of Rebecca is, when she's there, everything gets better. But you don't know how it happened. And you're not supposed to know. May she have the wisdom of Rebecca. And the fidelity and long life of Sarah, who only wanted a baby, but Abraham did not give her one. And after many, many years, she remained faithful until finally she got Isaac. And so, may the fidelity of Sarah, may the wisdom of Rebecca, may the beloved, magnificent beauty of Rachel all be balled up and poured inside of Miss Rebecca. That's what we want to happen today. Let it stay there always. And hence, James will be a fool if he ever tries to find a blessing, if he ever tries to find any happiness, if he ever tries to find anything outside of her. She gave him the holy faith, she gave him his, his reason to live. She will give him children. And she will give him all things that are good in his life. Everything else, let it be forgotten and done. Not needed. This is the sacredness of one flesh, of the holiness of marriage. Let us make image according to uh, make man according to our own image. Us, but one image. They shall be two. But only one flesh, only one heart, only one mind, and only God can make this union happen. And we pray for this blessing by blessing only Rebecca. And when she is blessed, Jane shall receive the greatest blessing he can ever receive any of the days of his life. And then once again, for Zenegar, we show again, your Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.